you know, within the Drupal community, I think everybody tends to think about when did Drupal really hit it big? Well, when the whitehouse.gov was converted to Drupal. But for me, it's really when the Harlem Globetrotters switched to <laughs> Drupal wasn't a big deal for me. And uh, KWAL was luckily um, lucky enough to help with the development of the new Harlem Globetrotters website in partnership with Keen Creative um, out of uh, Eric Phoenix, Arizona. So um, it was a great experience, and uh, Dave has been so gracious to come here and uh, give his account of the project and, uh, and let you know how Drupal helped him and continues to help him with, his, uh, with the Harlem Globetrotters. I heard that uh, the drinks are right after this, so I'm done. See you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you for having me. I'm actually really excited to be here uh, on behalf of the Harlem Globetrotters. Um, we're, we're big fans of, of Drupal. Uh, real quickly about me, uh, I work for the Globetrotters. I'm director of internet marketing. Previous to that, I was in the software industry for eight years and did various roles from webmaster to uh, pay-per-click to SEO to brand to Google Analytics to all of the above. Um, about the Harlem Globetrotters, if you don't know who they are, they are a 86-year-old organization. Uh, the main tour of North America is done December 26th through April 16th. Corporate headquarters is in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, and it's a global brand. We have an office in China, and we do tours uh, all over the place. I think we've been in 86 countries. Uh, we do France, South America, um, everywhere. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, so project history. So even though the Globetrotters have been touring for 86 years, digital is, is new to the organization. Um, so previous to uh, me working there, <laughs> they had a, a PR intern build the website in front page, and this was this was years ago, and in front page, and it was good, it did its purpose, it, you know, they got their foot into the water, and then they moved to a custom CMS uh, with no FTP access, and I'll come back to that, uh, with, a, with a custom email marketing database and, and very limited um, internal resources. So when, when I started, I got hired on as a, a big time executive, they made a press release, and I come in thinking that I'm going to make all these changes, and it's going to be super easy and piece of cake. And then I, I get there and I, I, I learn more about how the, the customer, the man, uh, their CMS is working. And I, I try to get the Google Analytics code changed. And it took me three weeks because the company that was hosting the custom CMS, they had to make all the changes because there's no FTP access. They didn't know the, the passwords to the, the analytics account that was running, so I couldn't get past data. Um, it, was, uh, it, it was quite a nightmare, and, and, and I wasn't too happy. Um, and so we did 275 shows or events in 220 markets. And so one of the first things I, I did as a big time <coughs> director at Globetrotters was I went into the custom CMS, and to add an event, you had to add it one at a time. And you had to fill in the information. You had to go in and say, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on this date, and this, and this, and this, and there's 24 code time format. Submit. Next. <laughs> uh, so that that was not that was not going to fly. Um, so the goals of you know of, of this project obviously was task automation. Um, we. We knew that this project was going to take a while because we were we were on tour, so a lot of things are crazy. So we decided we were going to build our external channels, our social channels, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and, and Twitter. And so we wanted to, to integrate into external channels. And we also knew we were going to have to migrate to an email database, and we didn't know which one. So to, to be determined, it has to integrate to some email database. Um, and we wanted it to be mo modular. You know, if Facebook decided they wanted to start charging $50,000 to have API access, we want to be able to unplug from Facebook and plug into the next big tubebooker.com. You know, if there's a billion people on it, we want, to, we want to be there and we don't want to have to go through this process again. So we just really needed it to, to be modular and, and act as a framework. So why Drupal? 
Well, it, it solves business problems and it, it creates efficiencies. Um, I wrote the RFP and I had past experience with Drupal, but um, it just it, it just works. It, it you know as a live touring event, we need to sell tickets. We we don't need somebody up you know uploading one picture at a time or creating an event one at a time or doing things one at a time. We need to process automation. Um, so after the RFP was was written, this is how I got executive buy-in. I got buy-in before Drupal was ever chosen. I went and said, hey, this is what our website needs to do. I'm going to go put this out and, and we'll see what people tell me. We'll, we'll see what, what solution fits this best. And so they had already signed off on, on Drupal before Drupal was even a word in, you know, in their vocabulary. Um, some of the added functionality we got with the new website, uh, geotargeting. If you go to harlemglobetriers.com from here, it's going to pull up San Diego and it's going to have a link to uh, the, the show here, which I think is February 16th or 17th. Um, and it, it, does a, it does a very, very good job of, of, of telling where you are and pulling up your current event. Uh, shareability, it, everything is um, everything's very easy to share. Um, it, it's, it, it, and if you share something, it's trackable. Every article is shareable, every event shareable, every, it, you know, every aspect that, that of the entire site, you can, you can share very easily. Um, like I mentioned, we, we tour everywhere. So the, the new site has built-in content translation uh, in French and Spanish. Now it's done via Google Translate. So the translation's not completely right. But I can tell you that the that French speaking people and Spanish speaking people love the fact that we have it there. And they are okay that that it's not perfect because we tried <laughs> rather than just having English. And then events are handled like events. Um, you know, before the on the old site it was there's a laundry list. There was two hundred two hundred and seventy different two hundred and seventy different games and you would scroll scroll through and you know, pick which one, Lexington, Kentucky. Now every event has it has its own page, which is great for SEO. Um, you know, you can invite friends via Facebook. You can uh, get a map to the location. You know, it's it's just like Lexington, Kentucky's page was made specifically for Lexington, Kentucky. Not hey, here's where the globe are going to be. Come find us. You know, it's a big scavenger hunt. Uh, and then, of course, efficiencies. So rather than going in one by one and, and, and creating 275 events, I have a CSV file that's already made from the booking department that now I can just upload it, and it, it creates all the events. And if I ever need to update it, if we go from a pre-sale, which is one link to Ticketmaster, to an on-sale, all I have to do is go and update the CSV file, re-upload it, and it up updates all my events at once. Um, like I said, we focused on, on on our external channels. So YouTube, we you know we're entertainment brand, so we have to have YouTube. Uh, we focus we really focused on those. But rather than having to upload a video and then pull it into the website, it's all automated. If I upload a, a video to YouTube, it gets pulled in as a node automatically into Drupal. It gets its own page create, created. It gets indexed in Google. It's got all the benefits of having a page on our website in one action. And then reuse of data. And I'll, I'll go to live view on here, but uh, basically we created a view. So in Facebook, we have a tab that's our schedule, which all it is is a view from within Drupal that pulls it in. So I update my Drupal database, and then it gets updated everywhere else that we're pulling it into. Um, as far as performance, I, I, you know, I guess I was a little bit concerned whether Drupal would be able to handle uh, the amount of visitors we get. Um, this charts over the past couple months, we average probably 10 to 20,000 unique visitors a day, and we've had no, I mean, we've had no problems at all. Um, the only problem we've had slightly is we're on Rackspace Cloud. It hasn't gone down, but we're overutilizing all the resources uh, <laughs> big time. But 
with that being said, we, you know, knock on wood, it, it, it runs, it works. It's, it's there, it functions, no problems. Um, what's next for HarlemGlobetires.com? Uh, mobile detection and optimization. Uh, we, we track all of our stats um, and going back to the performance. I was gonna, uh, the reason I asked that question about whether they pulled all the data in, we made a decision never to, we did not pull our data in. We didn't, we didn't migrate all our data from our old site to our new site. So what happened is we're picking up search engine traffic on our new articles and we're missing it from the old articles. And so our unique visitors via search evened out, but we knew that was going to happen. And we also knew, knew that our, our average time on site is four minutes and the average person visits six pages. We wanted that six pages to go down because we want to sell tickets. We, so we want people to, to come to the website and click buy tickets. If they have one page, that's great because then they're going to Ticketmaster to buy something. So we, so the, so the average number of pages went down like we expected. The average time on site went down a little bit like we expected. Um, it's just how you measure your business. Uh, oh, and then additional personal personalization based on geo demo data, uh, profile data. If you know, we know we're, it's already geo targeted. You know, if people, somebody's coming from San Diego, maybe we need to give them the weather and the local San Diego news from the county website. Maybe we pull that in. You know, give 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 people give people where they're coming from, what they want, and and make it feel like home. Make it feel like there's a a San Diego or a Lexington Kentucky you know, why not? Uh, and then we want to do a deeper integration with Exact Target. That's who we ended up with for email marketing. Um, and we want to do gated content and reward programs. Lessons learned. Uh, learning how other departments function is worth every second. Uh, I got to tell you, when I, when I was trying to figure out how I could not go in and add events one at a time, I was like, there has to be somebody already doing this. We have an entire operations department. They ha there has to be this data somewhere. It's just not on the website. So I went in and talked to everyone. I asked them how they did their jobs. What would, what would make their lives easier? What would they like to see? And doing that led to the, this, this final upload once. And all the, it's all based off the document that they already create. It's not like I have to go in and merge data and cells and everything. It's, you know... Uh, the research up front is it, it, worth it. Um, a, a phased approach to launch. Uh, we, <laughs> I, I picked the launch day of the new site out, out of the air. I was just like, ah, oh, it's a Friday. <laughs> That's cool. And that, well, and that actually worked out though, because it wasn't like if we don't launch the site on Friday, the 86 years is over. It's done. We'll have charged out of business. It's your fault. So. We were, we were able to get the things done that we wanted to get done and absolutely had to. We were able to push back the launch by a week. It wasn't too big of a deal. The old website had been there for three years. And, and so we put in everything into a now, must have, now must have within one month, and then a phase two, which, which we're working on. And then the third lesson learned is server configuration. We're, uh, we're on Rackspace Cloud, the, the dev team. By the way, I love KWall and uh, and Keen, they, they're awesome. I wasn't supposed to promote them, but they did a great job uh, uh, on the front end and the back end. Um, but they, they did their, the development on a dev server, on their servers, and then when we moved it to the cloud, there's problems with shell access. You, you can't have it. I'm not SSH access. You, it, different configurations caused a little bit of issues that we, we worked around. Um, that was that was definitely a you know a lesson learned. After you go through all that work to get the site done, you want it to just work. Um, as far as Drupal goes, in my opinion, future improvements. The only thing that I can think of really is performance tuning and optimization because we get so many we get so many visitors and I look at the load on the server. Um, you know, I, I think that if Drupal could inherently um, do some of the the page speed optimization such as patching and um, so on and so forth just automatically would be nice and then you know server processes there's the, the reason Drupal so awesome is because you can 
there's a module for everything, but because of that structure, it, it, it comes with a little bit of cost on a performance, like a server hardware performance. So I wish there was just an easier way to, to tune the server configuration where you can say, well, I don't, you know, I'm never going to use this part of it. I just want it completely off. And that's it. <laughs> does, does, uh, does anybody have any